Um, I remember uh, the. <laughs> I like I like Ryan Morse of politics. As far as I know, Ryan Morse, uh, where he's one year older than me too, same age as John Cain, and in Gatha County, I remember when he was driving around mudding um, <laughs> in the high school. So the high school was just built, and they were graduating. I was a freshman when, it, so he was sophomore. So he was, you know, it was a brand new building when we first got in there, and there's the cafeteria had a lot of windows on it on the one side, and so one night somebody just took trucks and just mudded all over the place and slung mud up all over the fucking windows and the, the whole windows was just um, um, drowsed or just uh, doused uh, with you know just shit tons of mud and I heard it was Ryan Morris and I also um, the, the right before the election day somebody had picked all the political signs up and they put it right in front of the high school and so when we got to the high school the very next day we saw just like rows and rows of political signs that somebody had put out like just a hundred or two hundred signs that somebody had just put in the front yard um, of the new high school which I think was a great political statement like okay a sign isn't you know who you are if you win or what it means or anything also kind of said look what's going on look at all these people look at all these candidates look at all these ideas is. And so, you know, I also heard that was Ryan Morris, too. Speculation, not 100% on that. Um, I, I like them both, so I wouldn't run away from those things, but he might not want anybody to know that. The, uh, the thing he would want people to know is, like, I remember when he played basketball, he always had, he had heart, okay? So he would, um... He would dive after a basketball. I remember, I think it was in Grant County. He was like, he just ran from one side of the floor to the other side, just like, you know, three laps being the main player on each one of the plays. And then there was a loose ball, and so he just like ran and dove from the, like, uh, the free throw line. And then he just slides all the way into the uh, auditorium, into the stage. And so his whole body just kind of slumps up because he had ran so hard to get the ball. Then he was just kind of sliding, and he couldn't, he lost control. And it was amazing. It was amazing. So I, it's you know, it's an election year. So who knows what's going to happen there? And um, and that's this reminds me of overall. I think it's a, a it's a Lynch job. I think they're just trying to fuck with John Kane. I feel as though the uh, the the good graces that Jennifer had had since people were sympathetic with her that it is over now because now it says well look she's flirting with other men so maybe she wasn't completely innocent maybe it wasn't just like oh he's a dickhead and she's an angel maybe you know there's some good and bad on both sides and um, and so you know that that's okay I think John should be able to heal how he wants to heal it's um, it does suck that he, he took the message you know off the phone and it was why there was a couple so I guess you know, I don't, I, I, I don't know. That's a, it's a, it's a foggy area, but I, they might be right on that. Um, and um, I, that, it might be best actually for John to plea bargain and get not, not any of these cases out, but something else. Like, what do you really want? You want them just to be fucking hung on? Like, what the fuck? Like. If they're just looking for punitive, if they're just looking to hurt him, then I think actually he should fight it all the way. He should have a jury trial. Um, I, I guess I was th th thinking it might be wrong because if you're, uh, you know, husband and wife or so, like if they're boyfriend and girlfriend, but it's sort of the same when you're living together, when you're domiciled together, it's sort of common law marriage, and and someone has a cell phone, you know, I, I wouldn't want my somebody to be looking through my cell phone. I got privacy, but since you're kind of living with each other, you know, are you one? Like when you get married, you know, we are one. One. Um, but are you one? Like, do, you, do you, we get our own privacy? Sure. Um, are you allowed to look at your boyfriend? Like, you shouldn't. I mean, I think you should be able to trust them, and you shouldn't be going through their shit. But he evidently had a reason not to trust her. So it's um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's sort of I don't know what it reminds me of. I I, I come up with some sort of. Well, let's see if this works. So, the Steubenville rapist case, okay? So, you had all the rapists that came out. You had the rapist that only served 10 months in jail, but the hacker that actually got the rapist, he got 10 years in jail. So, the person who does the rape, the person who did the crime, the person who's drank in the moonshine, the person who is flirting with another person who, you know, that had to been devastating for John, you know, thinking that, you know, you love this person and here they are flirting with somebody else. You come across this information. I mean, that's got to be hard. That's got to be like really hurtful. And um, and and so, you know, the uh, um, the, the it, it, there's a crackdown. It almost seems like on the technological, on the smart technological people. So when <laughs> I had a point, the. Uh, 
the hacker got 10 years, whereas the rapist only got 10 months. And so I feel like there is some justification for him to be able to get through that and be able to put that emotional, go, you know, process all those emotions. And also there was the crime of, um, you know, he admitted to drinking moonshine, which is, you know, that's that's a confession. Uh, you don't have to, you know, that's, you don't have to testify against yourself. And, uh, and so, the, you know, that might be inadmissible in court, but that does give you enough justification to investigate him. He's drinking moonshine. Where are you getting this moonshine at? Tommy Dunn, you got moonshine? Who do you know is that sell moonshine? You got some buddies out in Appalachia? You making some? You got some in your bathtub? You got some in your bathtub right now? Do you have friends in Gath County who's making it? Um, how many parties are you moonshining at? How long have you been moonshining? Uh, there's a lot of questions actually this case opens up and so I hope they keep pushing this. I hope they push this all the way through and we get to see, you know, all these, uh, all, you know, let's subpoena some records. Let's try to find out, you know, exactly who knew what what, when, where, and why? How come this is so important? Um, this also kind of makes me think about Edward Snowden and Bradley Chelsea Manning. So you have a, a corrupt political machine who's scared, and instead of fixing themselves or self-correcting, they try to rape the whistleblowers. So instead of stopping the illegal wars and, of conquest and the occupation and the empire, um, instead we go after those who are telling the truth that we're committing crimes and that we're hurting others. And so... Um, you know that's I think that's that's really uh, important. That's really important. Instead of actually helping the people in Gallatin County, you have all these you know just uh, violent arrests. You're just beating people over the head. You're throwing them in prison. You got this fascist, uh, top-down authoritarian culture that's going you know that's very prevalent, very strong um, in Gallatin County. So when it comes to uh, dealing with John Kane, that's what they're they're trying to do. They're trying to take a hammer. They're trying to hit him over the head, make him apologize, make him cry. You know, make him go through all this fucking bullshit publicity and have this, you know, sort of um, this, uh, you know, this trial being in his head. It does take a lot of headspace, so he's having to try to, you know, uh, try to declare his innocence, right? Because you're guilty until proven innocent um, in that courthouse. So it reminds me of a lot of those issues that's that it, most of. Um, I think this is bad for Jennifer Savellas. I don't think I think she wanted to just hurt him because she had got hurt, but I think she should have actually moved on because this case is going to blow up. It's going to show more. You know, people are going to be talking about it even more now. And so people are going to be looking at both sides, saying who's right, who's wrong, and so it's just going to get you know it's just going to snowball um, out of control. They're both going to stick their heels in the mud and. Then, um, the, uh, you know, they're going to lose, uh, both of them will lose, but the, uh, the fucking whole town will get to see a nice little fucking Jerry Springer sideshow, and, and who's the ones instigated this Jerry Springer sideshow that's going to happen at the courthouse. I think those are the people that's the, that's the corrupt political leadership we need to be analyzing and looking at. Uh, November 4th is eviction day, so this is election year. The, this is a time when you, if you you know if you don't like your leaders, kick them out. And if you I don't know, you can always write your own name in, right? So, um, yeah, that's those are my thoughts about John Cain and uh, him getting arrested. I think it's unfortunate, and I wish it hadn't happened. Um, you know, he is staying with somebody else. He is struggling. Like, come on, why make his fucking life harder? You should make it easier. That's the Christian thing to do.